Having discussed cyclopropane, cyclobutane, and cyclopentane, let's now transition to talking about cyclohexane, which is one of the most interesting and heavily studied and most instructive examples of conformations of cyclic alkanes. The most stable conformation of cyclohexane is called the chair. The chair conformer looks like this, and the reason we call it a chair becomes apparent if we think about the appearance of a lounge or beach chair next to this conformation. Just as a beach chair has a headrest, the chair conformer has a region of the molecule where one of the carbons sort of sticks up, representing that headrest. And just as the beach chair has a place to rest your feet down here at the bottom, the chair conformation also includes a carbon that represents kind of the footrest of the chair. The interesting thing about the chair conformation is that we finally reach a point where torsional and angle strain are at a minimum. If we look at a molecular model of the chair conformer, we see that all of the CC and CH bonds are perfectly staggered. We can see this by looking down one of the carbon-carbon bonds in a Newman projection view. We see this really nice 60 degree angle between the CH bonds and even the carbon-carbon bonds within the ring are able to be perfectly staggered. This means that torsional strain, which we've associated with the eclipsing of bonds, is at a minimum in this perfectly staggered conformation. Additionally, the bond angles within chair cyclohexane are darn close to the 109.5 degree ideal for sp3 hybridized carbons. And so the chair conformer of cyclohexane is essentially strain free, with angle strain and torsional strain effectively nil. Remember this was the special point on that graph of enthalpies of formation of linear and cyclic alkanes, where we observed that the heat of formation for linear acyclic hexane was equal to the heat of formation for the cyclic related compound cyclohexane. This is the empirical evidence that cyclohexane is essentially strain free. There are two ways we'll use to draw chair cyclohexanes. The first uses what I like to call the parallel lines method because it's based on drawing sets of parallel lines. Noticing, for example, that this bond and this bond in this view of the chair conformation are essentially parallel. We start with a pair of parallel lines offset slightly and slanting either to the left or to the right. This is actually the opposite of the way I like to do it. I prefer to draw mine slanting to the right, but you can draw yours slanting to the left if that works better for you. We then add a second set of lines at about an angle of 120 degrees or so to the first, 110 being ideal, that are parallel to each other. And these are the lines I'm drawing in blue. We've now laid down all six carbons here. All we need to do is connect the ends of these two three carbon fragments. When we do that, we notice that we once again end up with a pair of parallel lines, which I'm now drawing in red. And we've completed the chair structure of cyclohexane. I've left out the hydrogens for now. We'll worry about the hydrogens in a second, but getting that carbon skeleton down is an important first step. We can also represent chair cyclohexane using a Newman projection view, noticing that when we line up one of the CC bonds in a Newman projection, the carbon-carbon bond on the opposite side of the molecule is also in a Newman projection. So this is kind of a double Newman projection type of view. Because it's a double Newman projection, we're going to end up with two large circles in the final drawing, which I'm going to represent in blue here. In the conformation as we see it on the right here, the bonds in front are slanted upward and we represent that in the Newman projection like so. The bonds in the back are slanted downward, and we represent that in the Newman projection like so. From here we can also represent the hydrogens using the typical staggered arrangement that we see here. And because it usually gets visually complicated to represent hydrogens on these upward and downward pointing carbons, we often just leave these as implied CH2 groups. One important thing to notice about the chair conformer of cyclohexane Focusing on the hydrogens now is that there appear to be two different types of hydrogens within the structure. We have CH bonds that appear to point straight up and down so that the hydrogens are well above or well below the kind of pseudoplane formed by the six carbons of the chair. I'm highlighting these in red and we can represent them on the drawing of the chair form just by drawing bonds straight up and down in this viewpoint. In addition to having the CC bonds parallel, this is one of the advantages of this viewpoint is that these CH bonds pointing straight up and down are very easy to draw. Because these bonds are aligned straight up and down, parallel to an axis of symmetry in the molecule, they're referred to as axial. The other type of CH bonds we see in this structure have hydrogens that are roughly speaking in the same plane as the carbons, that sort of stick out to the sides of the cyclohexane molecule. 
Because they're oriented out to the side, we call them equatorial, and they're just a little bit trickier to draw, but take advantage of this parallel lines idea that we've seen already. Each equatorial hydrogen is parallel to the bond two bonds away from it. So for example, if we're drawing an equatorial hydrogen at this carbon here, we merely look two bonds away, and it actually doesn't matter which direction we go, and that tells us the direction of that equatorial hydrogen. So the equatorial hydrogen here is oriented in this direction, the one here is oriented parallel to this bond in this direction here. The equatorial hydrogen here is oriented parallel to this bond or this bond. Notice it doesn't matter which one since those two are parallel to each other. And so on and so forth. Axial and equatorial hydrogens are fundamentally different. One thing that I'll point out right now is that the axial hydrogens have gauche interactions with carbon-carbon bonds on the opposite end of the cyclohexane molecule, whereas the equatorial hydrogens lack those gauche interactions. They're gauche to two other hydrogens. We'll have much more to say about axial and equatorial hydrogens and what happens when we start replacing these with substituents, groups other than hydrogen, in a later video. The fact that we can draw rightward and leftward leaning chairs suggests that cyclohexane actually has two chair forms that lean in opposite directions. And this isn't just a change in perspective. The interconversion between these two chair forms is actually a conformational change. This carbon becomes this carbon, for example. It's helpful here to actually number the carbons so that we can see how each is transformed into a different type of carbon in this interconversion from one chair form to another. So if we label this carbon one, for example, carbon two is here, three is here, four is here, five here, and six is here. We'll have more to say on this in a second, but I just want to give you a feel for this interconversion of the chair forms and remark that it's not just a change in perspective. This actually is a conformational change. The mechanism of this conformational change is much more complicated than just one simple bond rotation and involves a few different conformations of the cyclohexane molecule. The first is the half chair, and the second is the boat, and as we'll see in a later video, these are both high energy transition state conformations. In other words, these are energy maxima on the coordinate leading from one chair form to another. The so-called twist or twist boat form is an energy minimum and thus represents an intermediate on the conformational coordinate diagram leading from one chair to another. In the next video, we'll look at the ring flip process in detail and explain to some degree using ideas of strain that we've seen already why the half chair and boat are energy maxima while the twist boat is an energy minimum.